Hello, Dolly friends. I am so glad you're here today. I'm going to do some minor doll repair of three dolls that I have. Two I showed you last time and one is Hans, who you've seen before. And I just wanna show you and encourage you to do your own minor doll repair. Even amateurs like me and maybe you can do these things yourself without harming your dolls and you can get a lot more enjoyment out of your dolls. I collect dolls for one reason, because I love them. Really old antique dolls and the only way I'm going to afford them is to buy them in less than perfect condition. Just having a good time and you can too even if you're an amateur. So I'm going to show you some things that work for me and maybe you might find they work for you too. Well, you remember I got this adorable Cupid doll from my cousin. I wanna take her completely apart and launder her. I need to take the stuffing that's in her out. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just detach her body. In all the dolls that I'm working on today, I've really been very patient and taken care. I didn't just cut or hack into anything. I painstakingly removed all stitches um, just so I didn't compromise anything in the fabric and the construction of the dolls because I don't know how to sew a new body. If you know how to do those things, you're way ahead of me and don't need to watch this video. So here's the interesting stuffing that was in her. It's cotton um, and it's got little threads and things and this is what old stuffing used to look like. I thought it was interesting that it was in her head and I don't know if that was to give her more balance or if it just shifted into her head, I'm not really sure. I did use an N95 mask while I did these things. So I just gave it a little wash in my um, perk, which I added a little bit of boost to. I've talked about these Twin Pines products before and I will link everything in the description below. I just wiped, I dusted off her head. I'm wearing my mask too. There was a lot of uh, dust and I'm just kind of wiping her off. This kind of rubbery vinyl is very, very difficult to clean without taking off coloring and paint and stuff. I use a product called Formula 911 and it's diluted and I just do just a very little bit. It takes quite a bit of scrubbing. So you, I just scrub it and then use another, a clean Q-tip to rinse it and then use this soft chamois cloth to polish it off. Look how much dirt I got off. I probably could have even cleaned more, but you know, you need to know when to stop too and I pulled out all her little threads and pieces. And I went ahead and cleaned, I wasn't going to clean out the inside of her head, but I went ahead and did it just with a, um, just with a cloth, a damp cloth, and I dried it out really well because you don't want to leave anything damp inside your doll because it will, it will get mold and mildew. So you don't want that. So I took my time. The whole process of doing the dolls took me all week. So her little suit came out pretty clean. I probably could have let it soak a little more to get it even more clean, but um, I didn't want to risk any fading or anything like that. The Twin Pines products say that they won't do that, but I have found they will take some color out in some things depending on how they're dyed. Now, if I really wanted to go all out, I could have probably soaked, soaked it even more and actually added color to it, but I didn't. Now, my neighbor who gave me the polyfill, thanks Marilyn, she worked for many, many years for Beverly's craft stores, and she told me that when using polyfill, you need to do what's called kneading it, which is pulling it apart and kind of aerating it, and that it will not, not form clumps when you stuff it, and you'll use a lot less of it to get a full look. I did a little basting stitch around the neck so I could keep track of sewing it onto her 
her vinyl head. This took me a very, very long time. Um, my thought was to go through the holes that were already there. This I did my best to do that. It was very, very hard to do this. And then I had a bear of a time getting out my basting stitch. I just wanted to give her a little more brightness in her eyes, so I did go ahead and add some more paint. The paint was very worn on her eyes and she needed to brighten up a little bit. I really took my time. I'm not really great with these kinds of details and I need to be very careful that I don't make it work. She would have been completely fine if I skipped this step, but did I? No, I went ahead and did it and you can too. But this would be one of those things you could skip if you felt you didn't have enough skill to do it or you didn't wanna risk it. All of the things that I'm doing to her can be undone. You can take her head back off. You can take her polyfill stuffing out and restuff her with cotton. You can wipe the paint off that I've done and airbrush her and she can be restored in a more professional way if need be. But she is only for my enjoyment. And look how cute she came out. I did knit her little cap that she's got on. It was just my own little design. If you're a knitter and want more specifics, you can email me or comment below. But I think she came out pretty cute. Moving on to the next dolls. As you can see, she's missing a hand and an arm. And when I showed you the last video, I already showed you that I had already made a hand for her and attached it to uh, the half of her hand that was there. So one of these is her left hand. And then this one is for Hans, who's missing one of his hands also. I just decided to do the whole arm because the hand would be so tiny, I wouldn't be able to do it. So I just used air dry clay and you can see that mine is not very good. Now I'm doing the same thing that I did with the Cupid doll. I'm not hacking away at the fabric. I am just removing the stitches one at a time, trying to see if any of the original pieces are salvageable because of course that would be optimal. I'm using some little tweezers to help me pull the stitches out. And here is the sawdust. You're gonna see little black things in the sawdust, but it's just the threads. And I just was too lazy to pick them out and didn't figure they would do them any harm. I saved the sawdust and can use it later. Now, somehow I had in my mind that I had cleaned poor little Hans, but I did not. Water wasn't gonna do it for him, so I had to get my I just used a little bit of my soft scrub on him, just a very little bit. Even though he's small and doesn't have tons of detail, I think he is a really beautiful doll. I believe the clothes that were on him were original to him. His little top was actually just a dicky and just went down the front and I thought, well, that'll be easy to just do recreate another one of those. His pants are wool, felted wool and they were a little bit stuck to his body, but I was able to get them off. His body's actually in pretty good condition. He really didn't have any sawdust leaking out. So for the most part, his body will be able to remain intact. You can see on the torso where his pants and shirt had actually been sewn into his body. So he is ready for some more assistance. Look at his beautiful face. I just could not bear his little eyebrow being like that because he is so handsome. As trepid as I was to attempt this, I thought, well, the worst thing that could happen is I have to wipe it off. It's just acrylic paint. I've mixed a little bit of brown and a little bit of burgundy. It seemed to me to have a little burgundy color to it. And you can see I do manage it, but I am going very gingerly. Now, the, the point of using the acrylic paint is that I could just wash it off if I wanted to.
but I think he already is starting to improve. What do you think? I'm thinking he's looking good and I should probably quit while I'm ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say a very big thank you to all my new subscribers and an extra, extra big thank you to all my existing subscribers. I am so very grateful for each and every one of you. I'm just so grateful really for anyone who wants to stop by and watch one of my videos. Thank you so much. Just a little reinforcement in the hips. My friend Deborah uses lavender to stuff some of her dolls and it's supposed to be a good antiseptic and help fight bugs that might get into your things. I bought these dried rose petals and lavender online uh, the dried rose petals have the same properties. So I thought I would mix them together. I certainly <laughs> need only a fraction of what I'm doing here, but then I'll have it for later. So I'm going to stuff that tiny little part of Hans's body with lavender and rose petals. Because the fabric is so delicate, I went ahead and dyed some plain muslin with tea bags and I decided to make a little piece that I'm going to fill and insert into his original body. I just don't want to risk any tearing of it because it's pretty well preserved and I think I can keep it that way. So you can see what I've done here and I'm going to use that same muslin for his arms. I see now it probably could have used more time in the tea bags. <laughs> it doesn't matter because no one's gonna see it. So I've stuffed it right inside and I'm just sewing the body closed. In hindsight, I probably could have stuffed it a little bit more. I decided to add a little piece of muslin over the top so that I wouldn't be gluing right onto the old fabric, but then I have to sew it through anyway, so you're compromising it one way or another, I suppose. Oh well, it's already done. How do you like that, Hans? Excellent. The old muslin is unsalvageable on the arm, so I'm going to remove that. I will keep the little broken piece, but I've made a whole arm not that it's very big but and you can see i've made a little dicky for him i do end up changing that out completely but you'll see keep watching some of the techniques i'm using i learned from watching deborah at doll's house dilemmas and i saw her do arms this way and thought it was very clever um they are way too long for little hans so i'm just going to cut them and add each side separately and like I said, I am gonna change his dicky. There's the arms there. I've, I've pulled his trousers up. They're gonna need to get stitched back together. And all I did was kind of sew that together. It really would have been fine, but the reason I decided to change it out is because his, the arms on his little coat are so short, you'll just see the muslin. And I thought he should have shirt sleeves. So this is what I did. It does go all the way around. Um, it took me a while because I don't really know how to do that, but it can be removed. Um, all these things can easily be removed that I've done. Nothing's permanent. He's just having a rest until I get, and get him sewed up. Moving on to my beautiful China doll with the Kate Greenaway body. Kate Greenaway was an English author and illustrator during the Victorian era, and she's worth looking up on Wikipedia. 
Once again, I'm carefully cutting every stitch of her clothing. So if anything is salvageable, I'll be able to do that. So I can see already there is a bunch of sawdust there and I'm hoping and praying it's not leaking out of the back of her body. I feel like it probably isn't because she's still pretty well stuffed. Look at her arm. I'm so happy that it has her original arm. I've never seen a China doll dressed in the fabrics that are on that piece that I took off her, but I don't know enough about it to know if perhaps they were, perhaps they weren't, I don't really know. Um, it doesn't look like there's any holes or leaking out of her back, so it's probably coming from her shoulders. So that is good news. Now, how her head is not really stuck very well on there, which is a blessing, really, because I'm less likely to tear the fabric. So I'm just kind of scraping away on the inside of the porcelain to loosen some of the glue. I'm really not doing anything to the fabric other than gently pulling it away from the inside. And there you go. Now she has quite a bit of sawdust heavily packed into her head. And honestly, I think I'm just gonna leave it there instead of digging around inside. I don't wanna ruin anything inside and accidentally hurt her or break anything because it's just sawdust and I'm really not too worried about it. I'm just using a little brush to brush away, brush the fabric and any surface dirt that's on it. And I'm just kind of feeling her and looking her over. Her body actually looks pretty good. There were just two small areas that have some leaking, other two areas other than the very top of her. So I'm just kind of putting some fabric over that and tucking it in so it doesn't leak further, just to sort of reinforce it from the inside. And I have this kind of golden fabric and I like it. it I had it on at hand <laughs> and it's, it's sturdy. There's a teeny tiny area on her side here that's leaking a little bit. So I am just going to add the fabric and close that up as well. The fabric really is tolerating my stitching and holding up pretty well. Now it's not I wouldn't go poking at it any more than I need to. I reinforced her hips because they were about to break off. So they're much, much better now. And I'm just adding back in the arm the sawdust that I removed from her. I'm just adding a little bit into her arm here. I'm using that same gold fabric. I like the way it looked. I tried some others. I tried the plain muslin and I liked the way the gold fabric looked. And then I, after I did it, I decided that I really should use some of her original fabric that was on her. And I liked the idea of having the purple fabric as a little flower near her wrist. There really wasn't much of that top that was salvageable and the fabric was not sturdy enough to do the whole arm that way. So I elected to just glue it on to the outside of the other arm. And I think it looks really good. The hand, the arm doesn't look good, but the, the fabric covering it <laughs> looks good and gives a little nod to her original clothing that I found her in. I'm glad I was able to incorporate the little purple piece also because it was trying to tell us something. All our dolls have a provenance, even if we don't know that provenance. And once they fall into our hands, we become part of that provenance. So I really take that seriously. 
Here is a nice look at her beautiful legs. I'm using Formula 911, a diluted bit of it, which I used on the Cupid doll to clean her boots. Look how well it works. I'll list and link the products I'm using in the description. After I cleaned it, I put some clean water on it and then I'm just using a soft cloth to buff it. They came out really, really nice. I just wanna show you that you can also use this Formula 911 in a diluted form or straight up to clean glue. It really, really works wonderfully on glue. Look at, look how good it's getting the glue up here. I'm gonna show you how completely clean I can get this with just a little Q-tip. Voila! I decided rather than emptying her head of the sawdust, I would just block up the area and prevent it from leaking out. I'm not sure why I decided to do this, but that's what I did. Getting up that last bit of glue before I glue her onto her body. After consulting with my friend Diana, who's a great, great help to me, I decided not to attach her head to a muslin piece. I'm gonna glue it right onto her body using some, a gentle application of tacky glue. Before I close up that hole, I just wanna get the last little bit of glue off of her head here. I've placed some small rubber bands between her legs to, to slip over her head once I get it on. I can't remember where I learned that technique, but I've never done it before, but I'm going to try it. As long as it doesn't pull too much and just helps keep the head on until the glue dries. So you can see that I'm just spreading it around here. Before we go to the photo shoot, I just want to remind you to come back and visit me next time in the doll cupboard.